575 people died. It sounds like a death toll from an earthquake, a tsunami, a natural disaster no one saw coming. Unfortunately, as I learned as a health clinic volunteer a few years ago, it was just another tuberculosis death on the Thai Myanmar border. Ladies and gentlemen, today I will be telling you a story. A story about how myself, a high school student, sought to tackle one of the world's most notorious diseases, tuberculosis. Now, the journey all started back in the summer of my freshman year, in which I, I volunteered in a small village in Sayo, Kachanaburi. The village is located in the mountainous areas that borders between Thailand and Myanmar. And it is, in fact, one of the most TB endemic regions of the country. Now, while I was volunteering at the village, I saw the difficulty the people in the village undergo to diagnose for different diseases, especially tuberculosis. However, what shocked me the most was the fact that Sayong district only has 62,000 people, but it has more annual TB deaths than the entire United States. So the main question that immediately came up in my mind is why is it that a disease that is already curable, a disease that is already preventable, why is it still taking away countless lives every year? With this burning question in mind, I came back from the volunteer trip and I started to do more research and I realized that the problem actually isn't about tuberculosis. The problem actually isn't about TB. However, the problem is about drug-resistant TB. According to the WHO, only one out of four TB patients get diagnosed for drug-resistant. In other words, 75% of TB patients are actually totally unaware whether they have drug-resistant forms of the disease and therefore are, wa are wasting their money, wasting their time, and risking their lives on antibiotics and treatments that may not even be working. And the root cause of all these problems is because it takes around 30 days to detect drug-resistant TB. Now, it is very important that we understand the severity of the consequences that follows because it is not really a problem of waiting for 30 days and therefore risking the patient's lives and wasting their time and money. But it is also a problem about the future. The future where we ourselves are at fault for turning a disease that is already curable back into an incurable disease. And so when that happens, when drug-resistant TB takes control, when at last defense antibiotics no longer works, what then will we do? So with this urgent issue in mind, I realized that the key to solving all these cascades of problems is to shorten the diagnostic process for drug-resistant TB. Now, to do that, it is first necessary that we understand how the conventional method works. So, for example, the current most widely used method involves treating the TB samples with antibiotics and then observing whether the TB samples actually grow and reproduce. So, for example, if the TB samples uh, grow into a visible colony, then it is considered drug resistant. Now, this method works for all types of bacteria, usually only requiring a few hours. However, since TB bacteria is one of the world's slowest growing bacteria, detecting drug-resistant TB takes around 30 days. Fortunately, one day I recalled from my internship at Red Cross a concept known as agglutination, which is essentially blood clotting. Now, I know that the same thing was happening with TB bacteria, which has a natural tendency to clog together into large groups, causing the proteins to be trapped within. And so I realized that if I can somehow transform the TB samples into a single cell suspension and then create a sensor to measure the change in protein secretion, this measurement could possibly indicate the bacteria's metabolic activity, eliminating the requirement for observable growth. Now, let's take a look at this idea a bit more closely. So first, we treat the TB, the TB samples with antibiotics and then somehow create a sensor to measure the change in protein secretion. If the sensor, for example, de detects an increase in the amount of protein that is secreted, then it is considered that the TB samples is drug resistant. Now, on the other hand, if the TB samples 
does not detect an increase in the amount of proteins. It, it is therefore, the bacteria is therefore is uh, no longer metabolically active and therefore is susceptible to the drug and hence not drug resistant. Although the actual research has much more complexities and terminologies involved, the core idea of the research is that we are trying to use an indirect method to determine the level of activeness of the bacteria and using that measurement to indicate whether the bacteria is drug resistant, eliminating the requirement for observable growth, which is too time consuming. With this idea in mind, I started to devise my own DIY solution to transform normal TB samples into a single cell suspension using medical needles and simple microfilters. And then the next step was then determining what type of TB proteins to detect. And so after weeks of scoring through lists of hundreds and hundreds of TB proteins, I finally saw the protein I was looking for called MPT64. The unique property of this protein is that it is secreted only by tuberculosis cell, especially in its active state. Now, I then constructed my own biosensor utilizing electrochemical reactions to detect the change in the protein secretion. So, in the detection process, the MPT64 protein is transduced into an electrical current. And so, the higher the electrical current measured, the higher the amount of MPT64 protein. And obviously, while I was doing all this research, there were numerous obstacles along the way. Um, initially, I sent my research proposal to various research institutions in Thailand, receiving back countless refusals because everyone did. That was impossible for a high school student like myself to tackle in such dangerous areas of research. In addition, while I was doing my research, I had to skip over 150 classes, often working at the laboratory from 8 in the morning to late at night because the laboratory was over 100 kilometers away from Bangkok. And like all other researchers out there, I encountered numerous obstacles and failures. However, what exacerbated this all for me was the fact that I had literally placed everything on the line. My grades, my time, and all the effort I could possibly gather. And so the question that kept haunting me throughout this process is whether I have basically risk everything, whether I have sacrificed everything for essentially nothing. And those times were definitely one of the most difficult times of my high school careers. And so, after overcoming those obstacles and spending over a year inventing and reinventing my device, I finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel as I discovered that my sensor can detect drug-resistant TB within two to three days, which is ten times faster than the current method. And to ensure that my sensor would reach the people who need it most, I further designed it such that it is portable and also low cost, as it is based on abundant materials like carbon. And although my research has won many national and international science awards, the real value of those recognition is that implementation will soon follow. After cross-validating my device, I have plans to work with the WHO to possibly implement my research in the rural areas of Thailand, and possibly in the future in other TB endemic regions of the world as well. Now, my ultimate goal is that one day, no longer will tuberculosis death toll be comparable to those of natural disasters. Because if you look at it, tuberculosis is entirely preventable, it is entirely curable. So why should it be taking away countless lives like earthquakes, tsunamis, and all those devastating natural disasters. And so, looking back at all those experiences, I realized that you don't actually have to be a college professor with multiple degrees to have your ideas valued. To be honest with you, when I started to do my TV research, I had barely any idea what tuberculosis was, except two main things. That TB kills people, and that TB has something to do with the human lungs. And so, actually, some of you guys right now in the audience might know more about tuberculosis than I did back then. And so the key takeaway is that it is not about how much you know, but how willing you are to explore beyond your comfort zone. Because those areas are where the magic happens. And so today, today, I'm, today I'm not trying to persuade you guys to become geeky scientists or crazy inventors like myself. 
Because each and every one of you have your own unique passions. All I'm asking of you is to add sweat, hard work, and determination to your existing passion. And hopefully following your passion will not require you to skip over 150 classes like I did. Thank you.